Higher Gun is a horizontal scrolling shoot em up with a twist. The twist is in its core gameplay mechanics and I will talk about it in more detail when I will be ready to do so. For the visuals, I really wanted for it to have a mix of pixel art for ship sprites and backgrounds and some unpixelated effects. So I decided to try out the infinite horizontal scrolling perspective grid. Right now this is all there is for the background. I also tried some particle effects for stars, but didn't quite get the right results yet. I guess that I want a good parallax background, so I will probably hire an artist to do it. For every beginner like myself, I highly recommend trying to tackle the task of creating the horizontal scrolling perspective grid yourself before proceeding with this video. This task really showed me a lot about the Godot engine, its strengths and weaknesses, and I learned a lot from implementing it. If you want to try it yourself, just stop the video now and return later. I can come up with 4 ways of solving this task. Pre-rendered backgrounds, which is completely doable if you are more comfortable with After Effects or similar software than with Godot. The downside is that it is not customizable after it was rendered and cannot be changed in runtime. Shader. I guess it's possible, but I didn't try it myself as I am not comfortable with shaders enough to do this. Draw function. It is possible to do it using the draw function as I implemented this grid using it before switching to the current method. At first I wanted to implement it all in one script, but I didn't find a way to animate the array of coordinates with twins easily. So if I would stick with this method, the final result would have the same base logic as the current one. Also there is a strange behavior. If you set the width of draw line to be 1.0 or less, it will be one rendered screen pixel size. But if you set it to even 1.01, .01, the one will become a game screen pixel size, and there is no between, or at least I didn't find it. Line 2D is the method I stuck with. In the final version, I have a bunch of additional parameters to change colors randomly and so on. But the most basic parameters are Y offset, this is how much empty space in the center of the screen will be, perspective, it is a modifier that I am using to give a sense of curvature to the horizon, horizontal step, basic step between the vertical lines, width of the lines and the speed of vertical lines. There are also additional scenes created for it. The grid horizontal line scene is just a line 2D without any modifications. I just find it easier to work with prepackaged scenes. The grid vertical line is a line 2D with a twin to animate it. There is no need to animate the horizontal lines, so let's just spawn them. Create an instance of a grid horizontal line. By the way, the loader is a singleton that preloads scenes form a game. Calculate the current Y of the horizontal line. I don't actually know why and how this formula works, I just like the result. If there is anyone who would do it the other way, please let me know your method in comments. Then check if the current Y is still visible, and if it is, pass the parameters to the instance and add it as a child. Now for the vertical lines. The timer will spawn line 2D nodes with two points. The first point, which is closer to the center, will be at the right edge of the screen, and the second point will be beyond the right edge of the screen. This, along with how often the new line should appear on the right edge of the screen, is calculated in the ready function. And then all the parameters just pass to the instance of the grid vertical line scene. When the new line is spawned, the twin starts. I use the interpolate method for the animation. In the interpolate method, you need to specify the object, the method name, initial value, final value, time, transition type, and easing. The best way to understand interpolate method is like this. You have a function and it takes one parameter. And the value of this parameter is getting interpolated from the initial value to the final. And it doesn't matter what you do with this parameter inside the function. In this case, I need to move the points of the line so my methods that are interpolated look like this. Basically, it takes one parameter and assigns it to the X coordinate of the point. And once the twin finishes the animation, the instance gets cleared from the memory. And that's it. Nothing fancy, but I really like the result. I also added some functionality to change colors all the time, so I can start a rave party using it. If you liked this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe for more videos about Godot and game dev. See ya!